Persecution's coming back. And it really ain't went nowhere. It's places you can go in the world that you can't carry a Bible without being killed. See what your Christianity is? There's a lot of Christians being killed around the world. And God's going to raise up an army in these last days around the world, Christian army in other countries. That's in these countries that persecute Christians. He's got an underground army already. A real Christian. Not Christians in name only. That's what I should start. What would be my acronym? Christians in name only. Uh, C-I-N. Christians in name only. No, C-I-N-O. Sino. <laughs> Christians in name only. They talk a good one. And all the blessings destined for them I have recounted in, oh, excuse me, uh, who love God and love neither gold nor silver. That's the problem. Most of the church world sold out. They done prostituted the faith by the prosperity pimps that help prostitute the faith. And the ones that's following them are greedy for gain as well. They done sold out. They all got price tags hanging out their ass. And it's all about me, 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 and what God can do for me and reduce God down to a genie in a bottle, a butler, a bellhop, a caterer to their needs, their selfish, fleshly needs. That's the Christianity of the day, at least here in America. Who love God and love neither gold nor silver nor any of the good things which are in the world but gave over their bodies to torture, who since they came into being long, not after earthly food, but regarded everything as a passing breath. That's what the Bible says. We're to recognize ourselves as pilgrims and strangers down here on a journey. And heaven is our, is our home, not this world. Jesus said, be not, or John said, be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, actually, Paul said, Romans uh, 12, 2. Most Christians, most, are worldly. Can't tell them it's the same business except on the other side of the street. They ain't no different than the world. They just use God as a, uh, what can you say? Use him to get a vantage point over the rest of the, the world. That's all. Get him a head start on getting what's there. Give him a vantage point on, on what's getting what's there. That's most of Christianity today. Who love God and love neither gold nor silver nor any of the good things which are in the world, but gave over their bodies to torture, who since, who since they came into being, long not after earthly food, but regarded everything as a passing breath, and lived according, and the Lord tried them much, and their spirit was found pure, so that they should bless his name, and all the blessings destined for them, I have recounted, in the books, and he hath assigned them their recompense, because they have been found to be such as as loved heaven more than life, more than their life in the world. And though they were trodden underfoot of wicked men, and experienced abuse and reviling from them, they were put to shame. Yet they blessed me, and now I will summon the spirits of the good who belong to the generations of light and I will transform those who were born in darkness and who in the flesh were not recompensed with such honor as their faithfulness deserved and I will bring forth in shining in a shining light those who have loved my holy name and I will seat each on a throne of his honor 
That's what Christ said. I think Paul once said it. He said, we have no idea. I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, the depth of the reward that awaits us. That awaits us. For sacrificing in this life here. We have no idea. The depth, the height, the breadth. The love of God that will bless us in the next life. Our minds can't comprehend it. This whole trek is about eternity. That's what, that's what the old book of Enoch was about. You've seen him, but what God showed him, imagine what, you have a whole, you have eons and eons to learn the things of God without a constraint of time because there is no time. And, and if the streets are made of gold, I mean, it ain't worth much. Everything's gold. It ain't worth much. That's all. Gold everywhere. You're talking about spoiled. Now, that's spoiled. I hate to use that word because the word means rotten. But I'll just use it in context you're familiar with. Blessed is a better word. It's beyond blessed. And all the blessings. And he hath assigned them their recompense. Because they have been found to be such as loved. Heaven more than their life. Than their life in the world. And though they were trodden under foot of wicked men. And experienced abuse. And reviling from them. And were put to shame. Yet they blessed me. And now I will summon the spirits of the good. Who belong to the generations of light. And I will transform those who were born in darkness, who in the flesh were not recompensed with such honor as their faithfulness deserved. Uh, that matches up with the Bible perfectly, especially with Paul and John and them were teaching that we were children of darkness. And we become the children of light. Christ said it too. We're converted. We were once enemies of the throne of God. Who belong to the who will summon the spirits of the good who belong to the generation of light, and I will transform those who were born in darkness, who in the flesh were not recompensed with such honor as their faithfulness deserved, and I will bring forth in shining light those who love my holy name, and will seat each of them on a throne of his honor, and they shall be resplendent for times without number, for righteousness is the judgment of God. And for the faithful, he will give faithfulness in the habitation of upright paths. And they should see those who were born in darkness, led into darkness. We get to see the wicked get it. That's the whole thing of, of being patient. That's why God said, be patient. Don't worry, they get their turn. All those that treated you unjustly, all those that abused you in this life, just think, Sure, you have a long list by the time you get to eternity. <laughs> All the people that did you wrong in this life, you get to see them get it. That's what he's saying. And whose flesh was not recompensed with such honor as their faithfulness deserved. And I will bring forth in shining light those who love my holy name. And I will seat each upon the throne of his honor. And they shall be resplendent for times without number. For righteousness is the judgment of God. For to the faithful he will give faithfulness in the habitation of upright path. And they shall see those who were born in darkness led into darkness. While the righteous shall be resplendent. And the sinner shall cry aloud and see them resplendent. God's going to let. That's the cold part about it. God's going to let the sinners see you going to heaven, just like he's let uh, the rich man see the, see uh, Lazarus being carried into heaven and heaven open up for him. That's as you go into darkness and into the lake of fire. And they shall see those who were born in darkness led into darkness. 
While the righteous shall be resplendent, and the sinners shall cry aloud and see them resplendent, and they shall indeed go where the days and seasons are prescribed for them. Darkness and lake of fire cut off from the source of light, which is God, which is the second death. They get the second death. Now, two deaths, and they get the second one. Okay, now we're going to read Jude, and that'll conclude. We just finished Enoch up and <clears throat> let you read Jude, or hear Jude, hear me read it. It's a short book. It's like a blip in the Bible. But yet, very Enoch inspired. Okay, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Christ Jesus are called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be, be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you all the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before ordained to condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward, destroyed them that believed not, that fade not exactly. And the angels which kept not their first estate, that's Enoch, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. Ain't that what Book of Enoch said? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, homosexuality and bestiality, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of the eternal fire, the lake of fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. When Moses died, there was an argument between Michael the archangel and Satan over his body. And the reason there was an argument, because Satan knew that if he could get that body off that mountain, they would take and worship, because that's what they were prone to do. They worship uh, that rod that, got, that Moses had made, a brazen rod, a serpent, and raised up when God had sent the fiery serpents to, to kill him after they had um, pissed God off by asking for meat and said his man of his angel baked food wasn't enough for him that the angels was baking. <laughs> they said, we tired of this heavenly bread. We want some meat. <laughs> and God got pissed and, and uh, killed a few thousand of them. But anyway, Moses had to make this brazen serpent to stop them. And, and if they looked on it, it would symbolize Christ. Christ being crucified as a symbol of the curse lifted up for man's sake. And, uh, but anyway, they looked up on it. They were restored spiritually and they were healed. And this brazen serpent. Anyway, they end up making an idol out of the brazen serpent. And God called it, the, he had a name in it. It was called the shameful thing or something like that. The, the, I, I can't, I wish I could have uh, that exact word in the original language. It's been a long time since I studied it. But anyway, it, oh, a thing of brass. That's what it was. The, the word that was translated, it was, it's, it was a thing of brass. God hated it. Because they made an idol. But they imagine if they could have got Moses' bones. <laughs> they would have been praying to his bones. They would have enshrined his bones in a statue probably of Moses and, been, and made an idol of it. That's why God didn't want them to have it. He knew, he knew them people. Now they were quick to turn, turn aside and worship idol. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring up against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam. 
uh, New Age Balaam, for reward and perish in the gainsaying of Korah. These, they're talking about the ones that turned on church leadership, real church leadership, and turned against Moses. And God opened the earth up and swallowed up him and his band of people. Oh, it's like 300 of them or so. These are spots in your feast of charity, which they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withered, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also the seven. See, I told you. The book of Jude backs up the book of Enoch, and this is in the Bible. So why ain't he, why isn't Enoch in the Bible? Plus there's a lot of quotes. I said Jesus quoted in Paul. You can go through the whole Bible. There's a lot of quotes of Enoch by men of God in there. His influence is ever felt in the Bible. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and all their hard speeches, which they have ungodly, all the ungodly sinners have spoken against. And God heard, has heard every blasphemy, especially this generation here, which has turned into a godless generation. They've really said some harsh things against the God the Father in heaven. And he, he's got angels recording every word, so when they get to the next life, they're going to have a shock in all of their lives. As they get the pitchfork and thrown into the flame. They ain't going to think God was listening. He's recorded every single word they said. They have ungodly committed all of their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walkers after their own lusts, and their mouths speaketh great smelling, swelling words, and having men's person in admiration. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, you seek the praise of men more than the praise that come down from the Heavenly Father above. Having men's persons in admiration because of their advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you they should be mockers in the last time, which is time when, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. So definitely the times when. These be those who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Everything's about feelings, flesh. Uh, sensual meaning Deweyism. I taught on it. You can get age of liars. The living for the sensual. What makes me happy? Me, me, me. Focuses on the flesh. What I feel. It's all about I and me. And what I feel. You know, give me my space. Uh, don't make me feel bad. Don't say anything harsh to hurt my feelings. My, me. You got fragile pe people that live in glass houses. Don't want you throwing no stones their way. But ye beloved. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Let me read that again. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, pulling them out of hell, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. That's what our job is. I've said that over and over again. We're little crystals, deliverers. That's what Christ ordained us to be. And you can be that wherever you are. We're the salt of this earth. We're the light set on a hill. I said that over and over in these dark times, dark ages, godless times, godless ages. You're to be the beacon of light. Wherever you are, 
I don't care if, if, you were, if you're working in government. Be a beacon of light in government. Don't be corrupt and follow the lead of, of the corrupt. You be the light. Shine the light. Expose those that are. That's your job. If you're in Hollywood, be a light wherever you are. You in the, in the sports, entertainment, news media, be a light. Let your light shine. See, I'm not one of those to tell you to quit your profession. I've even told, uh, I've even told, you know, strippers, you know, as I sat in the club, you know, hey, you could be a light in the strip club. Till God places you and takes you somewhere else, you could do his work there. See, the problem with the church world, they want to create, what's the word I can use? They want a simulated world. No, Jesus said you to be salt in the world. You to be the light of the world. He didn't want a simulated world. And they done made the church a nightclub. They made the church a, uh, a recreational club and so on and so on. I don't already give my teaching on that. The, the church, what the church supposed to be. That ain't what Christ intended for his church to be. The same business on the other side of the street. Except they got God and Christ attached. That ain't what he intended to be. You could be a Christian in the military, Christian in law enforcement. Wherever you're Christian, if you're in prison, be a Christian in prison. I've helped many people over the years with the prison ministry. You could be a Christian there. If you're on the wrong side of the fence, be a Christian there. Lead those out of there. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Christ Jesus unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty and dominion and power, now and forevermore. Amen. All right. That's the book of Jude and the book of Enoch. And you see, you, you got to see a lot of Enoch in Jude. All right. I hope you enjoyed this series. This is part six and it's come to an end. I enjoyed reading it to you. hope you enjoyed listening. And um, this ministry has moved you. Please support it. Go to streetpriestministry.org. Hit the donate button. God bless you. God keep you. May you go in faith. Good night, good evening, good day to you around the world. Grow in faith in Jesus' name.